No, I did not. I'll call him. You okay, Jim? The only way. We've got a lot of significant birthdays in our lives, but I don't know if any of them compare to turning 16. I couldn't wait to begin driving, and as terrified as parents are, they should love it because their teenager who's never home <laughs> is all of a sudden begging for their attention. No matter how independent you are, no matter how great of a job you have, how good your grades are, how grown up you act, you can't get a license without an adult. Suddenly, you see a resource in every car driving adult in your life. I wonder if they let me drive. What if we were that eager about advancing in our walk with Christ? God has placed people around you that, you know, can speak into your life and give you encouragement and correction and connections if you need to succeed. My character, Tony, he had people like this in his life, his father and his head coach, Tandy Geralds. It's important to have mentors in your life that can encourage you that pick you up when you're down and that challenge you, challenge you to grow. Not everyone has caring parents in their lives, but make no mistake, you can still find a mentor to speak into your life and it's necessary if you want to advance. Football just hurts me and everybody around me. Nobody's forcing you to play football. You know that, right? You can walk away right now and let the world pass on by. But this is bigger than football, ain't it? Yes, sir. Some kind of great power been given to you, son. I can see it in them kids' faces. I know what they're thinking. A black star like you at a white high school? If he can do it, so can I. That is your gift. This is your time to do as you choose. And that's a lot to carry. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. There are a few important things to look for in a mentor. Number one, someone who will support and nurture your existing talents. You don't want a mentor who refuses to acknowledge that you're coming to the table with something to offer. Someone who constantly belittles you or declines to support you and your goals. But you also want, number two, someone who will kick your butt if they need to. You don't need someone who's gonna take it easy on you all the time. If I'm being arrogant or stupid, I need to know. If I'm getting in my own way, my mentor has the right to tell me. But more than anything, you need. Number three, someone who sets a good example in their personal walk. This is without a doubt the most important thing to look for in a mentor. Without this, everything else is just smoke and mirrors. Can you think of someone who fits those three parameters? Start with number three. Who's a godly person in your life? 
If you start there, number one and number two can just simply develop as you build a relationship. But remember, good relationships are two ways. As the person being mentored, you have a role to play as well. If you've never purposefully placed yourself in someone's leadership, it can be challenging. We all do what we do in life. Go our different ways. The idea of molding men, well, that means a lot to me. And I want you to know that I'm here to help no matter what choice you make. And I think hey, you can feel that. Now, your mama showed me this. Said it was taped to a brick thrown into this house. And my little brother. He didn't do nothing. That was all because of me. Coming up here, I passed the football field full of kids. Saw a young black boy wearing number 22, his head held high. That's also because of you. I want to say something. So, you know the difference between you and these people? They're cowards, and you ain't. Approach the relationship with an air of humility. Be humble in how you seek your counsel of your mentor, and be obedient to God in everything. If there are any mentors watching this, I have something special to say to you. First, thank you for investing your time in the next generation. It doesn't go unnoticed. Second, don't squash our dreams. That may sound harsh, and sometimes we may need a shot of reality, but if a kid comes to you with a big idea of how they want to change the world, let your first response be, wow, how can I help you achieve that? And not, that's impossible. We need you to believe in us more than we believe in ourselves. Back to the mentees in the room. You may already be taking a stand as a leader in your school, church, or community. It's possible that there are younger kids who are looking up to see how you act. Encourage people to use their gifts and pick them up when they've fallen down. If someone needs to be told something straight up, tell them. Be honest and kind, but tell them what they need to hear. Most importantly, set an example in pursuing God and obeying His word or everything else is meaningless. I believe in you guys. I believe in our generation. God wants to use us to make a difference, but we can't do it alone. We need to learn from those who've become before us, to stand on the shoulders of giants. You've heard that expression, right? If you've ever read a high school yearbook, you've probably seen that quote. It was originally said by Sir Isaac Newton, and the actual quote reads this. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. In the context of the original quote, Newton was likely referring to all the other scientists and philosophers who had come before him and risked their lives to make it easier for people to accept revolutionary scientific thinking like <laughs> the Earth was round and revolved around the sun, which was groundbreaking. What's crazy about Sir Isaac Newton is that here was one of the most brilliant minds of all time, the first guy to actually figure out gravity, among other things, and he's saying, hey, I can't totally take credit for my accomplishments. He gives the credit where he feels it's due. 
to those who came before. There's a lot of people out there, Dad. I know. But they ain't here to see Woodlawn versus Banks. They're here to see you. You've given a lot of people hope, and I'm proud of you. Look at me. I'm proud of you. Win or lose, you're my son. Hey, this is Pastor Dave Stone, back with Caleb Castile. We're so glad that you're a part of these Bible studies, and I know you're learning a whole lot. Uh, I know I'm learning a whole lot just by listening to what it is that Caleb has to teach to us. So this is a D1 athlete. This is a man that, that played uh, and won two national championships, so you know a whole lot about what you've been teaching on preparation and yeah. humility. In the film, when you play the part of Tony Nathan, uh, you probably can think about how all that preparation was taking place for high school football and brings right. back memories for you. Right. Can you ever think of a time when maybe you weren't prepared for something? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I can remember one of the first huge auditions that I had, it was for Nickelodeon in this show. It was actually for a lead. And you know, I had three auditions that day in the same day and I'm just scrambling, scrambling. And, oh, man. I just thought that I could wing it. I just thought that, hey, I can go in there and, and you know, go off cuff and just nail it. And I get there and there's two women in the room running the audition and I sit there and first of all, I'm expecting to be able to use my script. And she's like, no, you gotta go off, oh, off script. Man. So I literally stand there <laughs> and I'm, she calls action and I just, I'm just stuck like a deer in the headlights, <laughs> unprepared and so. Needless to say, that didn't go well. Uh, so, well, we, we, we all have been in that situation. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of learn, learn from it because if, if you don't prepare sometime, it causes you to say, next time I'm, I'm going to be ready. Here's, yeah. a, here's a passage in Hebrews that says, no, no one enjoys discipline at the time. It never seems pleasant. But in the end, it will, it will reap a harvest of blessing. Um, humility and preparation kind of go hand in hand. And you talked about it some in, in the lesson. Tell us a little bit more about, about humility and what are some of your observations as, as you've seen in sports and maybe yeah. even in, in the acting career, how some people, the pride kind of puffs them up and that can be kind of dangerous. Yeah, I think that I've had several instances in my life where I've had to just humble myself and bring myself under, um, hmm. under a title of servitude, just like Jesus. and. Um, my senior year in high school, like I, I wrote about and shared in these videos is that, yeah. you know, I thought I was the man. I thought I had everything going on and you couldn't tell me anything. You know, my parents and my family would literally call me Mr. Know-it-all because I thought yeah. I just knew everything. And there was a point where something happened during my senior year and it totally humbled me. Wow. Completely humbled me. And I saw how God was able to forged me through that situation. And, um, and I had to realize that I'm not in control. Mm -hmm. And once I got to that point, it's just kind of helped me take the next step I needed to take in my relationship with Jesus, which um, mm -hmm. ultimately needs to grow every day. But uh, that was definitely a, a moment in my life where it kind of yeah. just struck yeah. home and just, you know, I needed that moment. Yeah, you know, every, every sin, I guess, comes back to selfishness or comes back to pride where we want to be on the throne rather than, than God. Uh, I think the Bible says pride goes before a fall. And the reason it says that is because that's where we get in trouble is when we take our eyes off, off of Him. Yeah. So when you think about your own situations, uh, I know that we've all struggled with pride. How's, how has pride caused you to stumble at different times? If I can get personal, I'm sorry to yeah, no. I mean, dig in, but that's just real. Um, that's something that we we all struggle with. Um, I, 
like I said before, is just having that pride in my heart and, and, um, and thinking that I have it all figured hmm. out. Um, that's why I've come to moments in my life where I do fall flat on my face. Hmm. And I realize that, wow, I cannot do the things that I want to do in life without adhering to God's word and following him. Hmm. And I think that's just so crucial that you, they, we have those breaking points in our life mm. because I feel like God just lets us fall on our face and we break our face so he can rebuild it the way he wants to mm. rebuild it. So I think those, those are definitely crucial points in our life. That's a great, that's a great point. Uh, last question for you. Uh, you know, you, you've got tens of thousands of teens who are, are listening to you right now. And if you were sitting with them at a Starbucks or someplace just chilling with them, you know, what would you say to challenge them in this area of pride and humility? What, what would you say to, uh, to someone uh, if you were right there in front of them? I think that it goes back to that verse in Philippians, I think it's Philippians 2, 4. It talks about how we need to be more observant mm -hmm. of other people's interests than our own. And so I feel like when you take yourself out of the equation and you put your, your thoughts in, hmm. and, um, and you can cast your care on someone else's um, well-being, that's when you've got yeah. it. And I feel like right now in, in my day and age, especially with my generation, is that we're so selfish and we're so fixed on just, we're fixed on being great at, in, in life, but hmm. we try and do it on our own. We try and do it at the expense of others. And I feel like the reason that I've come this far in this short period of time is because I try and do those things. I try and just look out for the best interests of other people. Thanks for those words of wisdom. That's great advice uh, from a 23 year old that'll even reach somebody as old as me and hopefully as someone as young as you. So we'll look forward to next time, more from Caleb Castile. Thanks a lot for being a part of this.